Welcome to Dan's On Fandoms, I'm Dan. Like many Star Wars fans, I've been clamoring to dive into the High Republic era, which is the time period set to take place roughly 200 years prior to the events of The Phantom Menace. Unexpectedly, Star Wars fans were provided with the opening chapter to the introductory story for the High Republic era, which is Light of the Jedi by author Charles Soule, courtesy of IGN. So let's talk about what happens in chapter 1 of Light of the Jedi, some takeaways as well as some questions that I have. The chapter opens by painting a picture of the galaxy at the time of the High Republic. The galaxy is in the midst of great ambition, culture, and inclusion, and is led by Chancellor Lina So from Coruscant. At this time, the Outer Rim is very much like the American frontier in the 1800s. It's a vast expanse of the galaxy that the Republic is attempting to bring into the galactic fold, but there are limited resources and infrastructure in place to help maintain order in this part of the galaxy. Additionally, there are only a few hyperspace lanes to the Outer Rim, making travel to and from this region of the galaxy a challenge. Coupled with the Republic's limited presence, this has created an opportunity for criminals and marauders to thrive in this part of the galaxy. To help combat these issues, the Republic has created outreach programs to help citizens such as Starlight Beacon. The Jedi Order, which is currently at their zenith, helps the Republic keep peace in the Outer Rim, and it seems as if Starlight Beacon and its ilk are Jedi and Republic outposts that people can turn to for assistance. Essentially, the Republic is bustling, the Outer Rim is the Wild West, and the Republic is in the early stages of incorporating it into the galaxy with the help of the Jedi. We're soon introduced to Captain Hayda Cassette, a former military commander and fighter pilot with the Malastare Solist Joint Task Force who's now the captain of a long-haul freighter called a Legacy Run. Captain Cassette and the crew of the Legacy Run are transporting roughly 9,000 settlers from overpopulated core and colony worlds to the Outer Rim. The settlers, much like settlers of the American West, are seeking new opportunities, new adventures, and a hopeful future. As Captain Cassette and all aboard the Legacy Run make their way to the Outer Rim, they find themselves abruptly on a crash course with something in the way of their hyperspace lane. According to Captain Cassette, this situation is something that is next to impossible as hyperspace lanes are selected due to their lack of potential debris. Furthermore, Navi droids aboard a ship flying through hyperspace would be able to detect obstacles in the way of a hyperspace lane and could then make adjustments to avert any collisions. Essentially, it was a near mathematical impossibility for a ship in hyperspace to find itself on a crash course with an obstacle in a hyperspace lane. Although Captain Cassette was able to evade the object by the skin of the ship's teeth, the stress of leaving hyperspace, evading the object, and possibly the ship's age resulted in the ship tearing apart. And that's where the chapter ends. So a couple of takeaways from reading the chapter. The first being that I couldn't help but draw similarities to the Outer Rim and the Republic's expansion into that region of the galaxy with American expansion westward during the 1800s. There were numerous similarities, from the travelers being referred to as settlers, a lack of Republic resources and infrastructure, a large expanse of terrain becoming absorbed by a larger political entity, albeit on a galactic scale, which is somewhat lawless except for the few Jedi that are hoping to maintain peace and order. Additionally, what the first chapter depicted seems to be the beginnings of the Great Cataclysm that we've been told will play a large role in the strife happening throughout the galaxy during this time. The Nile, which Lucasfilm has described as Space Vikings, will be the main group of antagonists throughout the stories of the High Republic era, are in some ways behind the events of the Great Cataclysm. I know a lot of people were speculating that the Great Cataclysm would potentially involve the Nile using some sort of technology to pull ships from hyperspace, but the first chapter of The Light of the Jedi seems to be depicting a different possibility. Since something was in the middle of the hyperspace lane leading to and from the Outer Rim, I I imagine that the Nile were behind it and they figured out a way to place large obstacles in the way of a hyperspace lane, preventing travelers from getting to or leaving the Outer Rim. Closing off all travel to and from the Outer Rim would allow the Nile to run amok, attempting to control and or lay waste to planets throughout this region. We know that there will still be Jedi at Starlight Beacon and spread out across the Outer Rim, so I imagine Light of the Jedi will show us some of those Jedi, as well as the Jedi still within the Galactic 
core and the inner and mid rims and how they're grappling with this event and the Nile. I also imagine we'll see other outposts similar to Starlight Beacon pop up throughout the Light of the Jedi, as well as other High Republic content that will follow. In canon, we've seen Interdictor class Star Destroyers pull ships out of hyperspace, such as in Star Wars Rebels. Those ships weren't ripped apart, so I wonder if, after the Great Cataclysm, ships were outfitted with equipment or were made with certain materials that prevented them from ripping apart if pulled from hyperspace. Also, I'm curious to learn more about the Malastare Sullis Joint Task Force, also referred to as Malast JTF, and what their role was in the galaxy at this time. I'm assuming Malastare and Sullis joined forces to combat a large threat to those planets, so it'll be cool to learn more about that. Guys, I was so excited to read Light of the Jedi and now I'm even more excited and anxious for this book to drop. I can't wait to dive into the High Republic and I was not expecting that the first chapter of our very first introduction into the era would depict an obstacle being placed in the way of a ship in hyperspace, ultimately resulting in that ship being torn to pieces, most likely killing all aboard. Wild as hell. The book was slated to drop in August, however, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the release date was pushed back to January of 2021, so we still have some time before we can nerd out about this new era of Star Wars we will soon get to explore. But what do you guys think about the first chapter of The Light of the Jedi? Does this make you more or less excited for the book's release? Let us know down in the comments. Want more videos on the High Republic? Check out this playlist. Please like and subscribe, and stay nerdy.